Okay, in this section I'm going to show you how to do a finite sum of a geometric series. There's a formula, the sum S sub n, me, and the n stands for what term? So if you're doing the sum of 5 terms, it's S sub 5. If it's the sum of 100 terms, it's S sub 100. A sub 1 stands for the first term. And then the formula goes 1 minus r to the exponent n, so if that was 5, then that would be r to the 5th over 1 minus r. Now, the um, r not equal to 1 is here because if r is 1, you have a 0 in the bottom of the fraction. So your r can't be a 1. So here's a series. When you see something like this, the fact that you see that sigma means that it's asking the question, find the sum, or telling you what to do. Find the sum of that series. So, first of all, to find the sum, I need some things. I need the first term and I need the r. So let's take a look at some of the terms of this series. Now hopefully you remember how to find the first term. I plug in a 1. So I have 2 to the negative 1, and then I have 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 3, all the way till I get to 2 to the negative 12, right? So, what do these numbers look like? Well, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2 to the 1. Okay, 1 half. Then I would have 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and 1 over 2 to the 12th. Oh dear, what's 2 to the 12th? It's a pretty big number probably, right? 4096. 4096. So, I want the sum of that series. So, um, I need to find the r. You know what the r is? Well, I can find it by going 1 half times r equals 1 fourth. Multiply both sides by 2, I get r equals 1 half. Let's try it again. 1 fourth times r equals 1 eighth. Multiply both sides by 4, r equals 1 half. It's always good to check it twice when you're finding the R um, <clears throat> so that you don't have a mistake here. So, now I have the R so I can use the formula. A1, first term, was 1 half times the parenthesis 1 minus 1 half, put that always in a parenthesis, 2, how many terms are here? 12, all over 1 minus a half. And so 1 minus a half is a half. So then I can just figure that out. And you should get 4095 over 4096. So hopefully you can get that. Please try it um, on your own calculator. All right, let's look at the next one here. Uh, let me take a minute to clean the board. Okay, so let's try this next one here. So <clears throat> first of all, means find the sum of, so we need to get a few terms so that we can find the r. So let's get a few terms of this. If I do j equals 1, I get negative 1 half. If I do j equals 2, I get 1 fourth. Negative 1 eighth. Positive 1 sixteenth, multiplying by 1 half each time. All right, let's do negative 1 half to the tenth. Tricky business here. If you put that in your calculator like that, you're going to get a decimal. You try to use the math key to get the fraction, and it won't give it to you because the number's too big for your calculator to handle. Easy way around that. Do negative 1 to the 10th over 2 to the 10th. And I just thought you probably had a trouble getting this one, too, so you should go back and do the final step of this one the same way I'm doing here. So um, <clears throat> negative 1 to the 10th, positive 1. 2 to the 10th is 1024. So, what do I have for my fraction for my sum? I have 1 minus 1 over 1024 all over 1 minus negative a half. Another thing I should do here is I should check is my, my r is not equal to 1, correct? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> all right, so my bottom here, 1 minus a half is 1 plus a half, that's 3 halves. 1 minus 1 over 1024, well, common denominator, so 1024 over 1024 minus 1. 1023 over 1024. 
Simplifying that fraction, 1023 over 1024 divided by 3 halves means times 2 thirds. And <clears throat> I usually, on my calculator, do a little uh, quick reducing. Like, I bet 1023 divides by 3. 1023 divided by 3. Let's just check. Yep. 341. And this divides by 2. 1024 divided by 2. Probably didn't even need the calculator on that one. 512, 341. That's the sum of that series. So, I think you can do these now. Good luck.